Hey guys, what is up? Today I have got a pretty fun video for you guys that I think is going to be so informative. And as I was coming up with the things that I was going to say, I was like, why haven't I done this sooner? Because I feel like there's just some things that you guys wanna know so that you can grow faster on Pinterest. And I'm gonna be sharing those things today. So when I was taking a look at my analytics, I realized that there were three pins that performed better than any other pins on my Pinterest profile. And I wanna bring you guys behind the scenes and show you exactly what I did, exactly what happened, and why those pins ended up going viral and reaching the success that they reached today. And spoiler alert, but I wanna let you guys know that if you stick with me for the next 10 minutes, you could figure out how you could possibly win a free Pinterest evaluation performed by me. So make sure you don't miss it. The three pins that we are going to be diving into are all blog posts that live on my website. So let's take a look at them. The first one is how I gained 1.1K Instagram followers in one month. Next, we have how to start a successful YouTube channel. And then we end with how I grew my Pinterest from 7K to 100K monthly viewers in just two months. Before we do anything else, we really need to take a look at the analytics. And I wanna show you guys my Google analytics as well as my Pinterest analytics, because here's the deal. Pinterest used to only be able to show you the past 30 days of stats on your pins. Now they've updated it so that you can see the past six months, but two of these pins were created over two years ago. So the past six months is not really a good representation of how well those pins have performed. So let's take it pin by pin and I'm gonna walk you through the stats. The very first pin we are going to be looking at is the Instagram pin. And let's take a look at Google Analytics first. So since it launched in February of 2017, this blog post has received over 34,000 page views. Now, if we jump to Pinterest and we look at the last six months, this pin has received over 2,300 clicks as well as 49,000 impressions in just the last six months. Guys, this pin launched over two years ago. So that's pretty impressive for it still being alive to this day and receiving those results. Now let's jump to a more recent pin. My my YouTube pin was actually created only 10 months ago. It launched in September of 2018. So that pin has pretty accurate and recent results. Over the past 10 months, it has already received 11,000 page views. Now, when it comes to Pinterest, honestly, I wish that they would get their stuff together, but every time a pin is repinned, it creates a new pin, and that's the way that it appears in your analytics. So this one blog post has a few pins that are performing in my top pins on Pinterest, and combined, this pin has already received over 8,000 clicks in the last six months, and it has received over 287,000 impressions in those six months. Now let's jump to the last pin because I really wanna to get to the strategies here. So the Pinterest pin has received over 35,000 page views in the last two years. So that one was launched in May of 2017. It has received 7,000 clicks on Pinterest in the last six months and 652,000 impressions on Pinterest in the last six months. Now, you're probably wondering why. What was it with these three pins that ended up getting those results? And you may be thinking, it's pretty obvious to connect the two, how I grew 1.1K followers on Instagram compared to how I grew from 7K to 100K monthly viewers on Pinterest. I mean, they've got similar titles, but the thing is there's actually three different reasons for each of these pins. Every single one of them has their own unique reason. And I'm going to be diving into that in today's video, but I want you guys to hold around to the end because at the end of this video, I am going to be sharing five things that you can do to increase your chances of going viral on Pinterest. To me, it's pretty obvious why the Instagram pin did so well. I chose a trendy topic. It's honestly that simple. A lot of people wanna learn how they can gain more followers on Instagram. And because I had a blog post that shared how I gained over a thousand followers in one month, people were willing to click on that pin because they knew that I was going to provide results, I was going to share my experience, and I was going to share my tips. So instead of just clicking on a pin that says three Instagram tips to grow your Instagram following, a lot of people aren't going to click on that. But if you say how I was able to hit 10,000 followers on Instagram, Instagram, people are more likely to click on it. So I chose a trendy topic and I also included the right keywords in my blog title and in my pin design. But here's the thing, if you set those expectations and you use a little bit of clickbait to get more clicks on your pin, you need to make sure that you live up to those expectations. And that's exactly why I think this pin is still performing to this day because people are landing on that blog post and then they are resharing it. The more repins and the more shares you have on the blog post, the longer it is going to survive, and the longer it is really going to succeed on the Pinterest platform. What also helped this pin performs so well, and you guys are going to hear me say this time and time again, is the keywords that I included in the description. Now, this is over two years ago. This is before I learned how to write a proper pin description, but at the time, I still targeted the appropriate keywords in my pin description, and that really helped me to reach the audience that I wanted to reach. Now, let's take a look at another pin, the YouTube pin. Honestly, if I look at this pin design, 
I created it 10 months ago. You think that I would be proud of it, but I'm not. I really wish that I had a better design. Oh, I just, I can't believe that it's performing because of the pin design, but obviously something is working, so let's dive into it. You may be thinking that again, this performed well because I chose a trendy topic. Just like Instagram, people wanna know how they can grow on YouTube and how they can make millions as a vlogger. So yes, YouTube's kind of a trendy topic, but here's the difference here. With this pin, I specifically targeted a keyword that other creators were not targeting. I was doing some Pinterest research and a lot of people are creating pins and blog posts around Pinterest and Instagram and not that many about Facebook and Twitter, but I do not specialize in Facebook and Twitter. But a lot of people also weren't sharing pins about YouTube. And I was like, if this is a hot topic right now and no one is sharing pins, no one is sharing blog posts on Pinterest that talk about YouTube, what happens if I do it? So it was kind of an experiment for me to create this one pin, but let me tell you, it seriously worked. And again, the keywords, guys, this played a huge role. I included so, so many keywords in that pin description to make sure that I was targeting all the right YouTube related keywords on Pinterest. But another reason why I think this pin ended up performing so well was because it was picked up by another YouTube creator. So not just another YouTuber, but someone that actually talks about YouTube on YouTube. So they are an expert in YouTube and having them pin it to one of their boards ended up helping me out so much. So thank you so much, Jessica. If you are watching this, you probably aren't, but thank you. You really helped me with this pin. Now, the last pin that we have to take a look at is the Pinterest pin, and I saved this one for last for a reason. Now, you may be thinking it's kind of similar to the Instagram pin as well because it talks about how I was able to do something. So it's my strategy, how it worked for me, proven results. Here, if you use this, you may see results as well. So it's not like three tips. It's like, here's a real strategy that can provide results. But the big difference with this pin and why it ended up doing so, so well on the Pinterest platform is because a company that I talked about in that blog post actually picked it up and offered to pay to promote it on Pinterest. So yes, they created an ad with that pin and paid to promote it on Pinterest. But before you go anywhere, let me explain that that pin did not just perform well because it was paid to be promoted. And it's not like it only received results at the time that that campaign was happening. It is actually still receiving results to this day long after the promotion ever happened. And we can take a look at my Google Analytics because whenever you pay to promote a link on Pinterest, they actually customize that link with, I think, question mark PP equals zero or something. I'll include it right here. But that is the link that connects to the paid promotion. Compared to this one right here is just the general link on my website, the other pins on Pinterest that are leading to my website that aren't paid. So this blog post is still receiving results even long after that promotion. But there are a few other things that I did within this pin to make sure that it still succeeded on Pinterest even before I knew that paid promotion was happening. So uh, first, if you take a look at the pin design, just like the Instagram one, I made sure that the text I included on that pin was clickable, that people would want to click on it. So not only did I say how I grew from 7K to 100K, on Pinterest, it actually says in two months. So it's showing that you can get these results fast. And that is something that people want to click on. That is something that people want to learn more about. But beyond that, again, for the millionth time, keywords, guys. I included the appropriate keywords in my pin description and that helps a ton. But really the ongoing success of this pin is because of what is included in that blog post. So when people see on Pinterest how I grew from 7K to 100K, on Pinterest, it's going to get people to click on it. And there's a few things that they wanna know. They probably wanna see your stats, exactly how it happened, a breakdown of your account, how it went from here to here, and then they wanna know your strategies. And that's exactly what I provided in that blog post. That is a long, long blog post that includes a ton of strategies. And I have got, I think maybe over a hundred comments on that one blog post of people saying that the strategies also worked for them or that they found it helpful or that it was the most informative blog post out there. Honestly, I have received so many positive comments on that blog post because of the information that I included in that blog post. And because of that, I've received so many shares on that blog post, which is going to continue the success of my pin on Pinterest, because that is something that Pinterest looks at. They look at how many people click on the pin and lead to your website, as well as how many repins you have. So the more repins that I have on a pin, the better. And that blog post has so, so many repins. So yes, paid promotion really did help me with that pin, but there are other things, other systems that I put in place to make sure that pin would ultimately be successful for the long haul. 
at this point, I'm hoping that you realize that there's not one set formula, not one set strategy that you can follow to be successful on Pinterest, to get your pins found on Pinterest. Really, there's several things that you can do with each of your pins and each of your blog posts that you create to make sure that they get the maximum amount of visibility on the Pinterest platform. So here are five things that I think you guys can do to increase your chances of going viral on Pinterest. The first one is to target trendy topics. If there is a certain topic within your niche that you know is bumping, is popular right now, capitalize on it. And if there's not something right now, there probably will be something in the future and you need to make sure that you are paying attention to the trendy topics as they come so that you can create pins, you can create blog posts on those topics. Number two is to include click worthy text on your pin. Your pin design is so, so important. It's what's going to get people to click on your pin to go to your website. And if you do not have click worthy text on your pin, you're really missing a good opportunity there. So even if your blog post title is a bit generic, use the text that you include on your pin to grab people's attention. And you can use a little bit of clickbait as long as you live up to it. Number three is a little bit harder to execute, but I do think that it can be huge for your success on the Pinterest platform. And that is to target keywords that other creators aren't targeting. Just like I did with my YouTube pin, not many people were targeting the keyword YouTube at the time. And I realized that a lot of people want to learn about YouTube. A lot of people want to start a YouTube channel. So if I could target that keyword, I'm going to get in at the ground floor and get those clicks to my pin. So if you can do your research and really look for the pins that other people aren't creating pins and blog posts around, that can really help you out. Number four is so, so obvious guys, focus on the keywords in your description. Keywords are so important. That's how you're going to appear in search. Number five, maybe something that you guys don't want to hear. I know you love free strategies. You want to learn how you can do it for free. And trust me, there are ways to grow organically on the Pinterest platform for free. But if you want a little bit of an extra boost, a paid promotion can really help you out. And it's not like you just see results when that pin is being promoted. You can actually see long-term results after that pin was already promoted. So if you have some money, even if it's just $20, try it out, see if it works. And if it doesn't, use the other free strategies that I gave you. So that is it for this YouTube video. So I hope you guys liked it and found it helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and make sure that you subscribe to my channel down below. But before you go, I have a question for you guys. I had this idea to do a Pinterest evaluation here on YouTube. So have you guys submit your Pinterest profiles in the comment section down below. And I will pick one of you to perform an evaluation, see what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong, and help you out so you guys can maybe understand what you could do a little bit better to improve your Pinterest presence. So if that is something that you are interested in, please let me know in the comment section down below because I think that would be so much fun to do. And while you're down there, actually just submit your Pinterest profiles as well. And hopefully that's something we can do in the future, but I'm out of here. Bye guys.